John here. Welcome to my series on character creation inside of Cinema 4D. We'll be creating a 3D character from scratch. By the end, you'll have picked up a few tips on modeling, UV unwrapping, and creating an animator-friendly rig. You should be somewhat comfortable within Cinema, but there's tips in here for all levels of artists. I keep it moving, so any questions, please ask below and I'll be happy to answer. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Before we get started, I'm going to show you a tool that I'm going to be using a lot during the modeling process, and that is the Stitch and Sew tool. So, I have an object here that I want to connect this edge and this edge. If I select my Stitch and Sew tool, grab a point on one edge and bring it to the other, it's going to connect. Now, if I hold down Shift, and bring that edge over. It's going to create new geometry in the middle of those two edges. And if I hold down control and click over to that edge, it's going to join them right in the middle of those two edges. First things up, we're gonna start with the head. We're gonna make a sphere. We're gonna bring that into a hexahedron type and we're gonna bring the segments down to 12. We wanna work with as low poly uh, information as possible. Uh, we're gonna place an FFD deformer as a child of that and what the FFD deformer allows us to do uh, is to alter the shape of uh, primitives without making it editable. Really, really powerful tool. So I can click over into point mode here and I'm gonna push and pull around my points uh, to get my basic head shape before making this an editable object. So uh, you don't have to copy my shape here. You can come up with whatever funky looking head that you can think of. Uh, a lot of this is gonna be pushing and pulling around points. Let's get this forehead up here. Let's pull this back. Let's go to the front view and I'm gonna make it a little egg in shape and we're gonna scale it down the x-axis. Just pushing and pulling points here. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty cool. Give it a big jawline here. All right. I think I'm happy with where that's at, at the moment. Let's get the back of the head positioned here. And look at that, that's still just a primitive sphere. Uh, next, we're gonna start with the body. We'll bring a cylinder in. Let's get that into position. Uh, let's take the caps off of the cylinder because we're gonna be connecting this up to the head. And let's bring those segments right, right down into eight. We'll give it a few height segments so we can play around with the geometry. Let's get this into place and just a general size here. Kind of looks good here. We're going to make that an editable object. And now we can start to form the shape of what our body is going to be. So I'm going to go into line mode here and I'm going to select um, the lines around my body and I'm going to start to form this out into a cartoony shape. Give it a little bit of a belly here. And we're gonna taper this down and we'll eventually be connecting this into our head. Um, so this will be our neck here. And I'm just pushing and pulling around points. Let's extrude out our neck here. And let's get that ready to be uh, positioned so we can connect that with the head. Cool. Look at that, now we've got very low geometry um, and that's what we want to keep it at the moment. So let's start on our arm here. Let's bring in another cylinder. Uh, let's get that into place, bring our radius right down. Again, we don't want any caps on our cylinder and we're going to bring our rotation segments down to eight because that will be connecting up with our body and you'll see how this will work once we start connecting all of our objects. Let's get rid of those caps there. And I like long skinny arms. I guess I model after myself. Let's give it a couple of height segments uh, so we can start to deform that arm a bit. Let's label these guys. We'll make that arm editable. Let's shrink it down on the Y axis here. Cool. 
And let's push and pull these out. Now what I like to do uh, is bring it back in the z-axis at the elbow uh, because once we start to get into rigging this uh, gives our joints a basic uh, idea of what direction uh, this arm will be going and we'll be doing the same thing for the legs to give it a little bit of a bend at the knees. So here we are just shaping this arm up. You don't have to copy mine exactly, but we're just giving this some basic shape, a little bigger at the shoulder. We'll, we'll be connecting into our body here. And... Oh, that's looking pretty good. Oh, going back into object mode. Let's get that positioned up where we think we'll be joining into the shoulder here. Pretty cool. You can see that head is still a primitive object. And let's add a, another cylinder for our leg here. Let's get that into place. Let's bring our rotation segments right down to four. Add a couple of height segments uh, so we can add some detail in the legs. Take the caps off and get that into place. And we can also uh, make this an editable object. Now we can uh, push and pull these lines around. I'm gonna bring this knee out a bit in the thigh. And now the heel I'm gonna bring down a bit and let's just move these guys into where we think is a good place for our leg. Pretty cool looking right now, huh? No. But bear with me and we'll have something surprisingly cool in a short amount of time. All right, now we're gonna taper it down towards the bottom of the leg. Make it a bit wider at the thigh. So, we've got four objects in our scene. We will be uh, connecting these guys, our head, we can uh, connect that with the FFD and make that an editable object. So now we have all of our shapes as editable and we are going to combine them all into one object and we can call this body. And now we can get ready to start connecting these objects. All right, let's go into point mode here. And this is where we're gonna be lining up the head and the body. I've deleted the wrong point here. Let's undo that. All right, we want to delete this point right in the middle. So now you can see where we're gonna be joining up our body and our head to create the neck. So let's go into our line mode. Uh, we're gonna make a loop selection here. Let's just get that into place. And I'm gonna strew that out a bit and start the bases of our neck. Still dealing with very low geometry count here. So we're gonna shift select loop the neck here and we're going to stitch and sew here. And look at that, we have a neck. Now, if I put this into a subdivision object, you can see uh, our character uh, shape starting to come together here. All right. Let's get rid of that subdivision object for the moment and let's attach our arm to the body. How are we going to do this? Let's make a loop cut along the body here. And just about where we want to connect into the shoulder here. And then in the middle. And we're gonna add another uh, cut right in the middle of our intersection here. Now, I'll show you a little trick here. Let's go into our line cut here, restrict it to our selection, and we are going to cut from all the corners into this middle point here for our shoulder. So we have eight lines that we're connecting from. And one last cut here. And if I go into point mode, select that middle point, and go to bevel with zero subdivisions. I can make 
a circle and then maintain our quads coming from our shoulder. We can get rid of that middle polygon. And what I'm gonna do here, um, let's bring down the shoulder here. Uh, but what I wanna do is pull out these shoulder points uh, to get them on the same position in the Z direction. So I am going to do a loop selection here. Let's go to our set point value. And on the X axis, I am going to set that all to the same number here. Pull that out a bit and we're gonna be joining up our shoulder to our arm here. So we're gonna do another loop selection here, stitch and sew and voila, we have an arm that's connected. So let's look at that. We can start to see our character taking shape. And we're still dealing with a very low polygonal count. So we're gonna do the same thing with the leg down here. First, what we need to do uh, is go into our bridge mode here and add some more geometry here. Now you see that our polygon here had a blue face. We wanna reverse that so our normals are aligned correctly. We're gonna make another loop selection in the middle of our polygon here. And we're going to pull this down and position our groin, for lack of a better term, into the correct position here so we can get this leg lined up and eventually connect it here. Let's slide this point up along here. Cool. Let's check out our geometry here. So let's go back into our loop selection. Let's get this leg up into place. We're gonna rotate that around and scale it up a little bit for our waist here. We're just gonna get into a general place here. Nothing scientific about this. Expand up our hip size here. We've gone past the zero in X over here, so let's just bring this down a bit. We're pushing and pulling. All right, let's grab both of our loop selections here and we're stitching and sewing. We have a leg. All right, I'm gonna grab all the points on the right side of the body and I'm going to delete those because our body is going to be symmetrical. So let's just make sure that everything, all these points are on zero in the X axis here. Let's go into our set point value and set it to zero in the X value. Now we're gonna add a symmetry object and make the body a child of that symmetry. Now look at that. We have two sides to our body. Pretty cool. And we can start to see this guy taking shape here. Let's get that out of subdivision mode here. And we can start to work on our hands and feet. So we're gonna bring on a cube here and we're just gonna get that into a rough location and size, pushing and pulling it around. That's a pretty big hand in the Y axis. So let's get it down into shape here. Cool. It's looking like it's a pretty good hand. Let's rotate that a bit. And I'm just gonna make a pretty basic hand shape here. All my fingers are gonna be combined into one shape and then I'll have a thumb offshooting onto that. So let's add a little bit more geometry here. We want the same amount of lines around our hand as we do at the end of our arm. So we can make that editable, get rid of that middle point there. So we've got eight lines around our edge there and we have eight lines around the end of our arm to match. So let's get these points into a position where we can better attach that into our arm. Let's scale this down, I don't know what I'm, <laughs> there we go. Let's get this hand scaled down here. And let's do a loop selection here. 
bring up our wrist a little bit and bring it in to better match with our arm. Cool. Rotate that around a little bit. All right, now let's connect these objects like we have with the rest of our body parts. And we can do loop selection on the end of our arm and the end of our hand, stitch and sew. And cool. Oh, there, that's how I want it. Okay, let's push and pull some of these hand points around so we can get a nicer shape for our hand here. So our middle points, we're just gonna pull in or pull out. Scale these guys down a little bit. And just adding a little concave palm here. Now we can see when we put this into the subdivision surface, we can start to see uh, a smoother shape. And we've got a hand on both sides because we're still in a symmetry object here. Let's grab our points. Let's pull this out just a little bit. Sorry, I'm going to go along the normal here. Let's pull out our points and make our hand just a little longer. Pushing and pulling, always pushing and pulling. All right, let's bring in the far side of our hand here. And that's starting to look pretty cool. All right, now let's think about where we want to place our thumb. We're gonna bring in a cylinder and we are going to put it axis here so let's bring it into position and let's scale it down to our rough thumb size here let's get our radius right down here pull it here let's rotate and place it into position where'd it go oh there it is cool and let's get our rotation segments right down to, you guessed it, eight, because we're gonna wanna tie that into our hand like we have the rest of our body parts. Let's pull it out here and let's add a few more height segments so we can uh, deform the thumb shape once we make it editable. And I'm gonna just shape this thumb a little bit. Thumbs are kind of wide and fat, not very tall. So let's bring it down in the Y axis. Uh, oh, see what we did here. Uh, our cylinder, we're gonna grab all of our points. And what we're gonna do is optimize. So that's gonna join our cap into the rest of our thumb here. Let's scale this down. Now we can grab our end point and we can pull that out a little bit and that's going to be the tip of our thumb again at this point we're just going to delete and we're going to be adding some cuts in sorry we can uh, connect our objects here we're going to make some cuts along our hand where our thumb will be joining up so there we go and then one in the middle for good measure Good, let's go to point mode here. We can delete this point and let's grab our corner points and scale them in a little bit so we have a little bit more of a circular edge loop here. So again, we're gonna shift click where we want to join, stitch and sew, and we're going to attach these two objects. Cool, now we have a thumb. Let's see how that looks. It's a little goofy, so we'll push and pull some of these points around, but more or less you can start to see our character 
taking a little more shape. So let's go into point mode and let's start pushing and pulling our thumb around until we're happy with our general shape. So let's make it just a little shorter. And at the base of it, I think I'm gonna wanna pull this out a little bit. So, uh, let's move this hand down a little bit. Cool. It's actually not looking too bad. Let's get out of our subdivision mode and let's grab the base of our thumb here and let's pull this out a little bit. We want that a little wider in there. And for a stylized character, this is starting to, you know, not look too bad. All right. We have hands. Look at this guy. Let's get out of our subdivision mode and all right. What do we want to start on now? I guess this guy needs feet. Let's just close up that polygonal hole at the bottom and let's make a cut around where we would like our foot to come out of the body. Oh, right about there. Sure. Now let's grab our polygons at the front here and let's pull them out. We're gonna go into extrude mode and we're gonna extrude that a bit and pull out our feet. Wow, pretty cool. Let's get those points all lined up in the x-axis. So let's grab all of those bottom and the foot points, go into our set point value mode. Uh, we're gonna leave the x and in the y, we're gonna set it to same value where we want it to be. So that's all lined up along our ground. Now we can start pushing and pulling these points around in our foot to get it shaped out roughly here. All right, we wanna get our toe moved over a little bit there. Pull that guy out. Now we can always go back into our subdivision mode and see how that's starting to look. Let's make those a little longer. Now we will be adding more geometry in to shape these uh, feet out a little more. But for right now, let's just push and pull our points around. Let's go into our polygon mode. Face mode, and let's make a cut around the sole of the foot, and let's make a loop selection on those faces, and let's extrude those out just a little bit, and that'll give a little more detail in our foot. Yeah, that looks a little too much, let's undo that. Let's just pull it out just a tad. Cool. Let's make a few more edge cuts here to give some more definition into our foot and we've got a shoe starting to take shape here. All right, now look in the short amount of time how far we've gotten with this character. Okay, I wanna start working on the face here, add in a nose and a mouth, so let's make a cut along where we think we wanna place the nose. Let's grab this polygon and we're gonna do an extrude inner and we're gonna bring that in a little bit. Remember we're in symmetry mode here. So we can turn that off. Let's just delete this polygon here and we're gonna bring these points into zero on the X axis using the set point value tool again. So we're down to zero, great. So now we have a nose on both sides of our face. We can go into our slide mode here and push and pull some of these points around to get the very, very basic uh, position of our points for our nose. I can grab 
that polygon and we're going to extrude this out. Now you see it's pulling out along the normal, so we're going to have to delete this polygon again and set these points back to zero in the X axis. So our symmetry looks correct. And look at that. We have a nose. How simple was that? Let's push and pull some of these points around to smooth off this nose a little bit, but more or less, that's a not a bad looking nose. Let's get to work on this mouth. Let's go into our polygon mode here. Let's make a loop selection around the middle of our mouth here, and we are going to grab these two polygons and do another extrude inner. Get that mouth into position here. Again, we're gonna get rid of these middle polygons and set, let's get rid of this leftover polygon. We can select all, click optimize, and that's gonna get rid of all of our unnecessary points. Let's set those all to zero in the X axis. And let's get our basic mouth shape into position here. And we can go to our slide tool and slide these points along their edges here. Get a very, very basic mouth shape. I'm gonna grab these polygons here, get out of symmetry mode for the moment, and we are going to extrude that back into the mouth. Fun stuff. We can get rid of those polygons again. We can select all of our points and optimize again, and get rid of unnecessary points. Oops, got this guy selected. We just wanna pull these points into zero on the x-axis again. There we go. If we go back into symmetry, we have a mouth. Look at that. And that needs a little bit of work. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna connect this body and its symmetry, and I'm gonna make that into one object. I'm gonna do this a few times. You'll see me uh, do this when I am modeling, just so we're getting this mouth into shape. I will be deleting the right side of that body and putting that in back into symmetry mode, but it's just something I will do every once in a while. So let's push and pull these points and lines around our mouth until we're happy with our basic shape. Okay, now I'm gonna scale that up a bit and let's push this. Adding a little more definition with an extrude. Now we can go to our side view and we are going to make the inside of our mouth a bit bigger so we're not seeing the walls of our mouth from outside. Let's just make these lines a little bigger inside that mouth. Now we can see our cool looking mouth start to take shape. The lip is a little harsh on the edges here. So let's make a loop cut around the mouth. And we can push and pull some of these points. Actually, when I think of it, let's do another loop cut on the inside of the mouth. So those middle points are going to be our lip. And let's smooth their transition into the surrounding geometry. So let's always switch back and forth into our subdivision mode just to see how our character is going to look. It may look a little funky while we're dealing with our low polygon count character, but when we switch over into subdivision mode, uh, you, you get a better idea of how our end character is going to look. So we're always pushing and pulling around points. Let's see. Let's grab the right side of our body. I'm going to delete that half again. And let's do a loop selection. Make sure that we are in zero in the X axis. We're gonna add our symmetry object back in, put our character into it. 
And look at that. Now we can push and pull on the side of our mouth and what we do on the left side of our mouth is going to happen on the right side because we are inside of that symmetry object. Let's pull these points down a little bit and let's soften our edges here. Look at that. You can really start to see our mouth taking shape here. Oh, the edge is a little harsh for my liking at the moment, but I can take care of that pretty easily. Let's grab that middle point here and let's just soften that in. We can see when we go into subdivision mode, look at that. All right, cool. So we've got a nose and a mouth that aren't looking too bad with a pretty low polygon count. Let's just grab some of these mouth points here and pull out our upper lip. And then you guys can play around with these shapes for as little or as long as you want until you're happy with how your character is shaping up. Okay, let's create some eyeballs. We're gonna bring in a sphere and let's get that into position. Let's rotate that 90 degrees around our P heading. And let's place that where we want it. And let's bring the radius right down on that. And let's pull it out to the front of our head. And we are going to place an FFD deformer. Let's put it inside of that sphere. And give it a few more points to play with. There we go. And again, we can switch over into our point mode and we can start to shape up our eye. So. I want to stylize this a lot and make it into a teardrop shape for our cartoony eye. Let's bring that right down in the Z axis and let's just pinch it in along the top of our eye and you can start to see how I'm thinking I want my eye to look here. Just scaling our points around. It looks a little stunned at the moment, but I think we can get this looking halfway decent. Let's just bring this guy back where he's going to be meeting our face and let's get him rotated around and stuck to where we would like to place him along our face. Let's get him set right back and cool. Let's get our subdivision on. We're gonna add another symmetry object here. We're gonna place that eye inside of that symmetry object. So we have two eyeballs now. Woohoo, cool. Now look at that. Let's just make sure we're labeling things as we go along. We're not gonna be making a ton of objects, but you know, it's nice to keep your projects uh, semi-coherent, especially when you start making larger and larger scenes. So let's start adding a little more detail into our character. Let's get these shoulders uh, a little bigger here and let's push and pull out some points along our shoulder top and bottom here. And let's get things spaced out here. Let's connect our symmetry object for our body here while we're playing around with some of this geometry. Uh, let's grab this neck here and let's get this into place for where our collar line is going to meet for our shirt. Always checking how things look in the subdivision mode. Let's get this neck a little more defined in shape here. And 
Now let's let's pull this chin out a little bit. It's a little flat face, so let's add a little more definition in the bottom of his jaw here. That doesn't look too bad. Let's get it back. Let's make a cut along our neck here so we have a little more definition where our head meets our neck. Let's make a loop selection here and let's just scale the top of our neck in a little bit. We have a little more shape into our neck. That looks good. Let's make a cut along for the bottom of our shirt here. And we are going to scale out the bottom edges of our shirt. And then we're going to make another loop cut at the bottom of or the top of our pants here and we're going to scale that right in and that's our shirt we can pull these lines up and scale that edge in a little bit and look at we've got a shirt pretty easily with a few loop cuts let's bring the bottom of our shirt down a little bit closer to the waist and that's looking all right. Let's make another loop cut in the middle, the base of our shirt to give it a little more definition at the bottom. Now I'm going to, again, delete the right side of our body and we're gonna throw that into a symmetry object. And we're going to get working on our shirt sleeves. So let's scale the edge of our shirt out. Cool. We're going to make a loop cut where our arm will meet our shirt sleeve. And we're going to scale that right down. And we're going to push that inside of the end of our sleeve. Always switching back into subdivision mode to see how things are looking. I feel we need another cut in here. So there we go. Starting to come together here. That's a weird shape. So let's go to our top view here and let's just grab all of our lines here and let's scale that in the Z axis, bring that down a bit so we don't have as oval a shape and cool. Look at, we've got our shirt starting to take form. While we're in the symmetry object here, we need to add the bottom of our pant leg here so we can make another loop cut just above where our shoe is and we can scale that out a little bit, checking in our subdivision mode. And let's make another loop cut here and we can see this definition on the bottom of our pants starting to take shape here. So let's grab both these lines. Let's just pull this up above the shoe and that's starting to look pretty good. And let's scale that up a bit. All right, got some bell bottom action going here. Let's scale the rest of our pant leg up a bit to match. And we can bring these guys in just a little bit so we're not intersecting on the x-axis. And look at, we've got our pants with just a couple of loop cuts and scaling out at the bottom. All right, just looking at this mouth a little bit, I think I want to tweak some of these points while we're still in symmetry mode here. Let's get out of subdivision mode and let's go into our point mode here and let's just smooth off some of these and add a bit of a smile to the edge of our lips here. The funny looking character we have going on here. 
All right. Let's get rid of our FFD deformer so we can't see it in our viewport here. Now I'm going to commit this body to our symmetry again. So we are all connected and we're going to make the collar on our shirt. Let's do a loop cut where we want our collar to be. Go into our edge tool and we can pull our collar up a little bit in our shirt and we can scale that out a little bit. Again, to get a little more definition, we add in another loop cut and look at that. We have our shirt, our pants, our shoes with just a few more cuts in our geometry. We need to add some hair to this guy. Let's go into our polygon mode here and we are going to select the right side of our head of where we want to add our hair to. Again, only selecting the, sorry, left side of the head. And let's add a point there. And let's split that from our body. So we have new geometry to work with there. We can add that into a symmetry object. And we can hide our body and there's our awesome polygonal hair. Let's label that and put that in a subdivision surface. Maybe it'll smooth out our hair a little bit. Let's bring our subdivisions down a little bit. Let's connect that subdivision because we want to work with this at a little higher uh, polygon count. We can go into our brush, turn on smoothing here. And what we're going to do is just smooth out the edges of our hair. So we're going to just, using our brush, just going along the edge of our hair. And you can start to see this polygonal block of hair start to take shape. Now let's just smooth all around our head. Cool. That's not looking bad. Let's turn our body back on. Now we have the edges of our hair sticking up through our head, which we uh, don't want and we will take care of here in a second. Let's just relabel this into hair. Let's select all of our polygons and let's scale it down a bit. And we're going to grab a loop selection on our points here. And we're also going to scale those right in so they're inside of our head. Let's grab our polygons again, go into extrude mode, and let's just pull those out a little bit. Awesome. There's one level, and let's do another level of extrusion. Look at that helmet he's got for hair. <laughs> okay, let's go back into point mode here. We've got our inner point selected, which we don't want to affect. So let's go to invert selection. Go back into our brush tool uh, in our smoothing mode. And we are just going to smooth his hair right back into his head. And he's got some stylized polygonal hair going on here. Uh, pretty much just want to do around the edges. Bring this top in a little bit. Wow. He is going to be a ladies' man. Let's get this all smoothed out here. Let's pull this back a little bit. No, let's undo that. <laughs> yeah, that's not looking too bad. Cool. Now let's add a little more definition into his hair here. Let's 
smooth away these corners, but if we want to make a part into his hair, how would I go about doing that? Let's hide our body and let's grab our hair object. And what I'm going to do is just select where I want my part to be. I can go back into my brush mode and I'm going to select surface. And let's bring the strength right down. And if I control click and paint that, I'm going to get a little separation in the polygon there and it's going to push away from where I'm painting and we have a hair part starting to come in. So look at that. Got a happy, well-maintained character here. Let's just get all of our objects properly labeled here. Got our hair, let's get that out of there. Let's start to add in some teeth. I think that should be the last thing that uh, we need to add to make our character a character and get onto our UVing process. So let's add in a cube for a tooth and we are just gonna push it around till we get it into place and the right size for our tooth. It's not going to be anything too crazy here. So whatever values you find works for your tooth. All right, and we're always pushing and pulling around here. We will be simply adding this into a cloner object to fill out the rest of our mouth. All right, let's make that a fillet object so we have some rounding on our edges. Bring the radius down a little bit. That looks pretty cool. We got baby Huey going there. We've got our tooth pretty much into place here. Let's put that inside of a cloner object. We don't want it in the Y axis. It's at about six teeth in here. You can see that it is eight centimeters along the X axis. So we're gonna position those exactly eight centimeters apart. I'm gonna add a little step rotation so it rotates back into our mouth. So it rotates along our fake jawline here. And then in my x-axis, I am going to put this over four centimeters because that's half of the eight in width that we are. We can now call this our L underscore upper teeth. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is go into my mirror tool, our naming, we're gonna replace the L underscore with R underscore. In our axis, we're gonna go X, Y and mirror. So now we have our right upper teeth. And what we can do is just in our rotation, make, make sure we're selected the right upper teeth, go negative eight along our rotation there. Now you see that we have our upper teeth. Very cool. Let's group these into a null object here. Rename this upper teeth. Let's grab these guys and in the Y, we're just gonna go yeah, 0.25 just to stagger them up a little bit in the Y axis. Let's control drag this guy so we now have our lower teeth and let's get rid of that staggering that we just did because we want those all to be even along in the Y axis and just drag them down and back a little bit and let's get them placed in our mouth. Not hyper realistic, I know, but it works for our stylized character that we've got here. Yeah, let's just see how everything looks in place here and Let's turn our hair back on. Oops, we've got an R on our hair. And this is 
more or less what our character uh, is going to look like. And we're ready to UV unwrap this guy and texture him. 